Alhamdulillah anybody have uh, questions or even don't have questions then just give salams and, and report on any good news. I know we get all the bad news but uh, sometimes you get a call and or email and say that we had good news and things open for us and we're, we're healed and, and some good uh, information to help me. Help me at noormuhammad.com inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. And jinn take shahada? Walaykum as salaam, of course. They're like our world that uh, they are good in our world and bad in our world and amongst them uh, many good and, and many bad. And like our world also they're more bad than good. The ones whom they take their shahada they're Muslim and that's why they teach that don't get involved with the, the jinn world their nature is very fiery. And that's why also when you go to a masjid and before when masjids were open you go to a masjid don't deal with Muslim people and, and don't think that anybody who accepted Islam now and you're, you accepted Islam now and, and that you'll ask everybody advice and everything will be great. Just because people accepted Islam doesn't make them to be you know holy, doesn't even mean that they're pure and they're purified. So uh, somebody just struggling with themselves to accept Allah doesn't mean they have the light of Iman within their heart that they've been tested and now that they're guides and, and Allah has sanctified and, and, and purified them. So everything with a grain of salt especially from their dimen, dim, uh, dimension that's why they don't befriend jinns, you don't call on them, you don't deal with them, nothing. Those whom now are mu'min and they have reached the category of budala, nujab, nuqab, awtad, wal akhyar, wa jinni wa malaika. Even the jinn are within the different categories of these awliyaullah, that's something different. Their realm when they reach to that level of their ahad and their covenant, their covenant with Allah is life and death. If they break their covenant they cease to exist and under their sultanat will call them in and they perish if they break their covenant with Allah So that level if they reach then those are the ones whom are of a trustworthy nature and that's why their service to mankind is never to be involved. Their service is from behind the scenes for shaykhs. So when the shaykhs are reciting and giving different awrads and different zikrs and, and different taweezes, those taweezes are coming with immense support and that support never involves themselves in the lives of people but they're there for a protection. They're the unseen, unheard protection within the homes, the environment and everything around because of their ahad and their covenant is not to in intervene. But if you go to a mosque and you start to feel like this and that and there's a creature there and this one start talking to you and fall in love with you and follow you and begin to make difficulty for you and they possess human beings and they can make a lot of difficulties, they can be non-believer and believer doing that. Just like you can go to the mosque and, and a believer can be cheating and stealing. There's a, a student that complained by email that she went to the house of an imam or a masjid of an imam and rented an apartment and he was a slumlord. He had an a, apartment to rent out, didn't want to repair it, didn't want to pay for electricity, didn't want to have heating, didn't want to have a, anything. And she said that, I never thought an imam would be a slumlord. So again like anything else people are good and bad and it doesn't mean just because they accepted Islam they're now good because there's a lot of Muslims who are just by name Muslim but doing very bad things. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah If my child sleepwalks is that a concern? Yeah, inshaAllah that, that you try to play the recitations in the house, again that's why the whole system. So when you're asking a question like that after a whole talk on, on all of our systems, if you're, if you're doing everything that you've given the taweez, the house has taweez, you're playing the dalla khirat into the house 
the house is like a masjid, has on the walls all taweezes and, uh, and all these holy uh, items that the family have uh, taweez upon their body, all of that and the person is still walking at night then that's something you have to email us at the helpme at nurmuhammad.com because that's some sort of an energy that is able to even control that person and the person is, is walking. So that, that, that has to be sort of uh, looked at and thought of and make sure that they, they understand what do, that they, they have the taweez, they have the energies in the house and, and everything and anything is happening in the house that, that you can't explain. And As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Allah. Sayyidi, after praying my night prayers and reciting the du'as before sleep, I still dream whole night which disturbs my sleep a lot. Please you dream what night? Just uh, disturb my sleep a lot. What does? Uh, I, didn't I still dream, dream whole night? So she's dreaming all night and which disturbs her sleep. Okay. Any advice? Again, are you doing the awrads, the zikrs, you have the taweez because all, all these spiritual practices that they're describing is like a, a, a shield that you you have your armor on and you're shielded, you have like your sunnah clothes, you're sleeping with the sunnah not naked, you have taweez, you made wudu before you slept, all of these spiritual practices then you sleep and, and inshaAllah try to understand the active mind, not to go to bed with too many things on your mind. Maybe the televisions that you watch, too many active shows that you watch, maybe you're, you're too involved in dunya and all night long thinking of and, and un, the mind is also unwinding. So then to understand your mind, your body and your soul. So all of these have to be at a state of peace. Don't be too active, don't be too too much into your mind. People who are too much into their mind, their work and all their activities, they just replay all those activities at night when they're sleeping. That's why then the concept of meditation and tafakkur is to empty the head because as soon as you sit to contemplate you have to really process and empty your head, stop thinking, stop you know trying to go make an email, try to go get a sandwich, stop all of those things. And learn how to keep yourself from not moving, not doing anything, just breathing, just listening to salawats and to find a sense of peace with oneself. So it's the whole package that has to be done, keeping the wudu, doing the zikr, all of these things. And then at night sleeping with wudu and all these practices, it should be much more peaceful, inshaAllah. And then you can email help me if the, if the dreams are, are of what nature, work related, too much of uh, negativity, too many uh, things of bad things. Some people have very horrific dreams because the energy around them is coming and it's trying to sort of uh, disturb them, give them you know information that uh, would be disturbing to them. Then th that again has to be with the house has to be playing Dalal al Khirat, you have to make your house a masjid. So you have to have all of these sort of beatific fragrances, you have to have the, the house to be playing beatific sounds as if like you're at the Kaaba, that everything is, is fragrant, everything is beautiful, that you, you have an area where you pray and it's holy, your sajadah's there and you have uh, Dalal al playing, you have uh, beautiful calligraphies upon the wall, these are all protections, these are all you know immense realities. So that your energy is to be sanctified and at night time to be more peaceful otherwise all these energies and beings come into the home and then begin to wreak havoc on, onto the, the physiology and the mind of the person inshaAllah as a, as a way of causing difficulty. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah how can we get rid from the state of continuous waswas? Any specific recitation, please madad. Walaykum as the continuous state of waswas, again these are all the energy that when, when waswas is coming means something is here. And as it's coming and, and talking to you, it's coming too close. So this is a sign for somebody who, who has waswas coming 
that they're coming too close to you. So you're, you need to be doing the awrad, you need to be keeping wudu. There are people that I know that you know, they know and they don't keep with their wudu and they say, I don't have time, I'm busy, well, okay well then this was was will be right there. And that's when you have the problem, that's when they start to whisper things to you that make you angry, oh yeah that really? And then people actually act on the waswas, they go and fight with people and, and, and think that they have like you know intuition coming to them, it's never an intuition, it's just the devil whispering in their ear to make fitna, bring up old issues, past issues, you know what this person said, what they meant when they said it, go call them up and tell them. And that that's <laughs> shaitan, so this is not from Rahman, Allah never sends an angel to do that. The angels, uh, everything from Allah is always of, of every example of Prophet The angels come and tell you, find 70 excuses. Angels come and tell you, be quiet. And the angels tell you, overlook it, keep peace, keep peace, keep everything to be good. Angels tell you everything that comes hard against yourself, that, oh I have to say it, no, 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 Allah asking you, stay quiet and sort of chew down, bite down on it. And be patient, be patient. Allah loves sabirin, those whom have patience. So anything that telling you to ignite and to fight and to go after something is a shaitan. And as a result he's coming too close, then we go back to the zikr, the water, the, the wudu, the energy practices on how we built the talk tonight. Why that talk came was for all these people's questions that they, they, they're asking but it was already answered. And that's why those, that type of talk came because this world is now under full attack. So how, how much are you letting these devils into your home and how close are you letting them to you? And as a result you have to put all of these practices back, am I keeping my wudu, am I keeping my practices, am I doing my daily awrad which is my connection with the shaykhs, am I doing my daily meditation asking that dress me from your light, bless me from your light, keep your madad upon me, keep me to be in the presence and I, I want the light of Prophet to be dressing upon me. I'm doing all my salawats, I'm wearing my taweez, my house has been fortified, my house is playing salawats. I'm burning the beautific fragrances in my home of the oud and the amber, frankincense, the, the isfan, the ru seed, black ru, the wild ru seed. I'm doing all these practices and then this energy begins to push away these creatures. Because the more you bring of what you don't have, the concept of the madad is get out of the way and let these shaykhs begin to come. When they begin to come into your being and into your home, they're all around you. And when the shaykh comes, he comes with his shaykh, with his shaykh, with his shaykh, with his shaykh, all the way up the golden chain. And it's not what you know in life, it's who you know in life. So it's not about reading something and, and, and you know educating yourself on, on all these different aspects of this world and this and that. but. It's about bringing this energy onto our, our being and surrounding ourselves with ibadullahi salihin. That from the unseen salihin that they're all around, they like my practices, they like my wudu, they like my good character. They can't stay with us if we have horrible character. We yell, shout and scream, they're gone, they're gone. Because the energy that insan makes at that time is a demonic energy. Anytime somebody begins to get angry, a demonic energy is coming. Could you imagine that all around you are like companions, Ahlul Bayt, Imam Ali, do you think that they would actually be sitting around you while you becoming demonic? Or they say, this person now has given themselves to the devil and they leave. So this character and this why they're teaching that you have to have good character, we have to have good character. When we try to keep our good character, keep our madad and we cry that, oh I'm upset about something, I go and make wudu, they're all around us sending light and sending blessings because it's like a marathon, they want you to succeed in Allah's way. That keep patient, be good, be loving and, and struggle with yourself, it's okay if you cry, you cry and Allah will reward you. All these beautific lights come and surround us. As soon as I say, no I want to be angry. It's I'm asking now the devil to come, when the devil comes they go.
And they said, this person doesn't want us around nor can we stay, they can't stay around somebody who's giving themselves to a devil. So they leave. So the whole concept of this mada this is, it has to be so well understood and that they're doing it, they're breathing, they're doing the practices and, and they'll see more and more of these difficulties that are coming. When these sicknesses come and when all these things, these are all spiritual attacks. They give a little bit of a cold to a person but what comes through the door is far greater, far more dangerous. That's the one that killing people, not the cold. But it's the, 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 the beings that are coming into the house as a result of your weakened state of the cold, then these beings come in and they begin to try to attack and son. And that's why then it's so important to fortify, keep the energy, good character and uh, keep Allah to be happy with us, Prophet to be happy with us because shaitan wants to destroy that. You know he can just say, okay make the person they get angry, have bad character. Immediately the person now is exposed to every type of difficulty can come to them at that time. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam uh, Just want to say thank you so much Shaykh, I have healed from severe depression and anxiety and doing my daily awrad, Salatul Wudu, thank you so much. MashaAllah, Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. Um, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam from where should we start to cut down our ego? First step. First step email help me at <laughs> nurmuhammad.com. Then we'll send you the first letter. So there's always a series of, of emails, and, and the guys that help me, they put it all on emails so that when you email for the first time, and if I, if I don't recognize the name and emailing, then the first letter will go out, then the meditation letter will go out, the bio letter will go out. And then based on anger and anxiety and all the different issues that are, are most essential for understanding. Someone was asking about Lataif that I, I meditate all my life, I want to open my Lataif, send me something. We sent the meditation, they said, thank you very much for this email but you didn't answer my email. I wanted to know about the Lataifs. So again, I don't know what shaykh you dealt with but be very careful when you email us. The, the shaykhs are replying. So when you get an email back, you read that email and master that email, master everything on that email before you send back something saying, this is not what I asked for. It is exactly what you needed, they didn't care what you asked but it was a reply to exactly what you needed because Naqshbandiya doesn't open anything for anyone based on your request, it's not McDonald's. Because everyone now is raised with McDonald's that you pull up, you give three bucks and say, can I have my fries please? It doesn't work that way. It's a matter of you pulled up, they grab your hands and bring you in. And as a result of bringing you in, they want to work you, they want to keep putting you through a system and they want to see first, are you trustworthy, are you listening, are you disciplined, are you here just to take something and run? or you're here to actually serve and to take this way and this path through your life. Allah is not going to open everything. You can't get through the airport without going through TSA and the TSA wants to go through all your bags and go through everything you have, pull it out and say, what's this? In front of people too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's like, if, the, if the TSA wants to do that, what do you think Allah wants to do? You know, they want to go through everything. This person is asking for the keys into the, into the heaven, the kingdom. You're asking for the keys into the heaven. Do you think Allah not going to just, you know, your ahna wa sana, please take whatever you want? Or there's going to be a significant amount of testing and, and all sorts of understandings and discipline. Every type of hardship comes to see the, the servant's condition, their reactions, their character and do they really want it? Are they willing to struggle for it? Yeah the people don't understand tariqah anymore, there's some lady was uh, emailing that this person is saying bad things about you, let's get in a discussion and email these people back that they're saying bad things. Say bad things, 25 years we, we've had a thousand people saying horrific things about us. 
And that's just the nature of this way. Do you think if you're going to propagate something good that the devils are not angry? Of course. And that's why Mawlana Shaykh described that the, your whole life will be filled with barking dogs. And the quality of the shaykh's life and, and the way they've been trained, if the shaykh wants to stop and engage with every barking dog, he's just going to have a lot of fur in his mouth because he's going to end up biting the dogs and it's a dog, it's najas. Anyone who exhibits a character of rah, rah, rah. You know backbiting is, is when you think you know something and it's true, it's backbiting. And if you say something and it's false, it's slandering. Both ways you're burned by Allah. One you said something you shouldn't have said, the second is you're making up things and slandering. So it's exactly a dog. If a shaykh wants to stop and fight with every dog that comes against him, his mouth will be full of fur because he's just going to end up biting them like a dog. Then he became a dog like them, a huck. So a shaykh just looks at a dog and say, poor creature, he's, he's barking so much for, for no reason and you go on your way and continue your path. Shaitan has sent many dogs and many obstacles and many difficulties. It's not about you know resolving each issue, it's about being consistent with istiqam and having firmness on the path to reach my destiny. I have, I'm not stopping until I reach where I have to reach inshaAllah and not to pay attention to the right and to the left. Eh, the moon is filled with people who threw rocks, that's why it, it's, it's all its terrain is, is all sort of uh, been plummeted by rocks. So our life is, is of that nature that you keep doing what you have to do regardless of what anyone says. Who's with you, alhamdulillah, who's against you, boom voyage <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Yes Sayyidi, yes, can we print the taweez and put around the house? Sure, you take the, the high resolution images if you have, print them. And keep them with respect. If you have a printer, you want to print it as a sticker. If you're going to print a nice one, put it nicely framed and put them around the house everywhere. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please advise if seeing repetitive number sequences every now and then has any significance? Yeah, don't worry about that. Because then you start to home in on it and, and focus on it, that's, that's not as important as trying to focus on the shaykh and doing your meditation. I see the number 111, then I see number 111, then I see number 111, maybe it tells me that I, I shouldn't be, I have a, too much free time. <laughs> so it's better that I sit and close my eyes from seeing any number, anything and try to understand my tafakkur contemplation that I'm nothing, I want to connect my heart and that's what I'm saying is the most important. There's all these other things can be big distractions if somebody is not connecting in this peaceful time. Can you imagine a time comes when there's no power to broadcast then what you learned is what you learned. If you downloaded, if you got the books, if you, if you printed these things, you printed the articles, every time we talk. There's an article that comes out about a week later, there's like 50 transcribers now from all over the world. If you're not printing these articles down on these subjects that are of interest to you and where you feel you have a, a gap in its understanding, there's a day coming with no power, no electricity, no internet. I don't think you thought that this internet will be broadcasting in the middle of uh, nuclear warfare. Where everything going off and off and then it was, hello we're here today <laughs> so, so this is uh, Allah's giving an immense amount of understanding, a permission to, to promote a lot of knowledges and there's only a short period of time. We don't know how much that time is so we always have to live a life in which we say the time must be short, let's try to do as much as we can. If you think, oh the long, oh, this could be a long time shaykh, you're not correct, you shouldn't live like that because then those are the people who say, well I'll correct myself 10 years from now as for the next 10 years I'll do every type of haram and forbidden, no. Because I have to think that tomorrow is my last day, I may die tomorrow, let me make sure that my today and my tonight is correct and I did everything to, to meet my Lord in a correct way inshaAllah. 
So we don't know how much time we have left, what events will come that could take out all the power, all the internet, all of these things. So do we have everything that we need? And uh, the, the people who are closest are in most danger because those are the ones who take for granted everything. They don't know how to meditate, they're not understanding how to connect. They use their physical uh, connection and closeness uh, as, a, as a means but that may not be there all the time. So it's, it's a danger for everyone that they, they to connect, to, to make their heart connected, to understand the material, to print out what, what needs to be printed out in, in times of goodness for when times go bad there's no access to print anything. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa How do we stop do we falling stop into falling traps of laziness? laziness. Uh, I mistake I the whispers of Satan as inspiration and fall into a pit of laziness. Again the, the meditation, the salawats, all of the, the practices and then writing for yourself a, a discipline. When people had work and they had a time schedule at work. They write on, on every half hour what they're supposed to be doing and they would discipline themselves on that schedule that I do this, 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 this and they do these things. If we don't have the same discipline for Allah that I, I write it down and say, in the morning I'm going to do this, at the, this time I'm going to do my awrad, at this time I'm going to do my salawat, at this time I'm going to read and recite my dara qirat. When I put it down into writing, I make it as my, my table, I can even now for the clever ones they can put it on their phone as a reminder. When you set up as a reminder, remind me every day at 2 o'clock start reciting this and then it comes on, I try to stop what I'm doing, I go sit down do my recitation. It's a matter of how much you want it. If you surrender to a bad character and say, that's just the way it is, it's not uh, correct. And that's how people are now, when somebody advises you, don't go fight with this person, it's not good, this is going to be dangerous. It's, it's not a fight, I'm just going to say what I have to say and if, if that's uh, going to be the reaction then that's what Allah wanted. And that's not correct, that's, not, that's you surrendering to your bad character. When you're advised that don't do something, don't do it. Don't say, I'll just let it out and whatever happens, happens. That's a, a way to, to live a life that's very dangerous and a lot of difficulty will, will visit you if you think like that. The, the purpose of guidance and a guide from a, a shaykh, a guidance from a shaykh is he teaches the best of character because he understands something dangerous that you don't. And he understands there's something behind that's much more dangerous that you can't imagine. And if you do certain thing it may trigger that door to open. And you don't want that to open and don't say that is whatever Allah wanted because if it comes your way you, you'd be you know shocked at why Allah allowed that. So it's, it's just the, the nature of people and the weird understanding of how they, they understand things. If someone tells you that, don't bother this lady, don't do like this, don't do like that, they don't have to tell you that behind the door there's a bull, this is an example. That don't bother this person and you know try to talk in peace and says, it doesn't matter, don't, don't worry about it, I'll say what I have to say and whatever it is Allah's will. Uh, but you don't understand behind that door there may be a bull, a creature that coming towards you, a, a difficulty just for you to understand. You ignore what is the, the shaykh is at advice, the person argues with that person and they open a door that they didn't want to open. Once they open it that difficulty came running towards you. So the shaykhs don't have to explain themselves but you know a person with a good heart takes an advice and says, you know this is an advice, this advice is being inspired and coming from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum, says, this Ulul Am this is an advice from above. If the person doesn't want to listen to it then you know they only have themselves to blame for whatever comes. Sayyidi, a lot of people lot of saying people thank you for thank you all the all openings and healings and blessings. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Allah dress us and bless us inshaAllah next week the opening of the holy month of Rajab and Ramadan's right around the corner again. So Allah dress us, immense blessings of the month of Rajab, the month of Allah the month in which Allah 
will give to his servant whatever gifts he wants to give with nobody knowing. Means that the, the seeds of all realities and the Israhi wal Maraj and every reality is opened upon the, the believers for the holy month of Rajab. We pray that Allah give us a life to see the lights of Rajab, to give us a himma in which to, to pray and fast and do our awrads, our zikrs. Welcoming the holy night is that every month uh, when the night is going to come on a Friday night or Thursday night just to be safe you shower both of those before Maghrib. At Asr time you shower and say, Ya Rabbi that uh, to clean me like a qusr, like my death, that take away every badness, every character that's, that's bad. That this shower to be like a ceremonial shower that wash away all these badnesses so that I can receive the tajallis that you want to bestow upon me that you may not have sent by my bad character, Ya Rabbi have forgiveness upon me and then you shower with that intention to take away these badnesses and that Thursday night, next Thursday night or next Friday night so you can do both depending upon when the tajalli is coming in into Medina. Then Allah dress us and you accept that uh, wash and then you welcome that holy month with the, the qusul and, and then the awrad, there's a whole uh, page of how to welcome the month of Rajab. Print that out ahead of time so that you have that, it's on the app under the month of Rajab. Then you put on the general practices, you print that out and then you check off what you have to do for the welcoming. And that Allah grant us to receive the holy month of Rajab with all its immensities, all its realities. And many times Allah tarar ajab that immense things begin to happen upon the earth. And as we're entering into this cycle of extreme unknowns, we can only imagine what would be coming in Rajab. We pray that Allah give us uh, protection, give us lights, give us blessings inshaAllah, keep our families and communities to be safe and strong and protected. And the best of protection is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the best of character. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.